Governor Mark Dayton spent part of the week touring portions of the state assessing flood damage, yet there might not be a special session to allocate any potential funding that is needed if these areas are declared disaster emergencies. Joining me right now to explain why, we have Representative Jean Palowski. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Let's begin with your district. You, you're in Winona, which is a river town, and you were saying off camera that Winona itself is not subject to flooding, but the area around it is. So for areas that are being hit right now by all of the spring rain, can you try to encapsulate what they're experiencing and what, went, what you went through, particularly in 2007? Yeah, southeastern Minnesota in 07 went through the what is now the largest disaster in the history of the state as far as cost goes. And the state's component of that was about 150 million. That was about 25 percent. The other 75 percent was covered by the federal government. As a result of that disaster, uh, I was the one that said we needed something to guide the 13 agencies, the governor's office, and then articulate to the people who are flooded, and this is to your point, how is the state and the federal government going to respond to the cities, to the counties, to the townships, to the school districts? Because this is first and foremost a public entity bill to keep that public, uh, those public institutions and that infrastructure running. And in southeastern Minnesota, most of our bridges were blown away. Whole roads were blown away. So you literally couldn't travel. We had a community underwater, Rushford. They had lost both their electrical, they had lost their communication, they had lost their sewer system. So in, for all practical purposes, the city was dead. So the 12A was created in 08 to set up a playbook. This year we created, and, and because of the legislative auditor and his suggestions, uh, 12B, and we also set up an account that would say, up to a certain point, you don't need to call us back into special session. And the point, we, we recommended six, I think we got between three and four million, that this account could be accessed um, by the governor and then with uh, the okay of House and Senate leadership. And then we would start the process and we'd begin helping folks using that money, and then we'd have accurate numbers when we would go back into regular session. And that's really the, the biggest advantage here, that when, if we do have to fund beyond what's in that account, we would have accurate numbers. Most of these special sessions are called, we anticipate, guess what the money will be, but our guesses are usually wrong, and they can be wrong both ways. In some areas they can be low, and in some areas they can be high. So this fund actually takes from previous disasters money that's left over. It would fall into this fund to be used for a future disaster. So are there exceptions where a special session would have to be called? You talked about a cap. There, this does not prevent a special session. This is up to the governor. If the governor decides that there is not enough in the fund or that the disaster is so large, that we should go into special session and we should start appropriating more money. That's totally up to the governor. This does not prevent one. It gives the flexibility, for instance, of last year's special session, the 2013 one. Certainly that one would not have needed to be, have been called. We would have had this in place. We could have used this. We would have gotten by just fine. No special session. Some law lawmakers like the idea of a special session and being hands-on the moment that this money needs to be appropriated. Why move away from that process? You, you spoke a little bit about it, but why did you really feel the need to move away if, for the most part, it is fairly well, efficient? I think they want to be hands-on to uh, all the other things they introduce. There's one bill we're dealing with. How many bills are introduced in these sessions? 30, 40, 50? None of which can be passed, none of which can be heard. Uh, then there's always the possibility of expanding the special session. Well, we didn't get this done during regular session, and we didn't get this done, so we should do it now. Well, now we're suddenly, what, a full-time legislature? So the focus should be just on the special session. It shouldn't be on all the other things that legislators continually think they want to do. This is a must. This is a need. It has to be addressed. So, Representative Pulowski, I imagine that there are a lot of viewers out there right now who are wondering, A, if their areas are, are going to eventually be de declared disaster areas, and B, if there's going to be any money allocated. What did they need to know? Well, you used A and B. Uh, chapter 12A now is a 12B, and 12B works just like 12A. 12A is when there's a presidential declaration, then it kicks in. 12B is when there's a gubernatorial declaration of a disaster, and then it mirrors 12A. So the governor, if this does not fall into a big enough disaster for the federal government to help us, then the governor could use 12B. And the reason for it is we have some areas of the state where the population is so dense, and this is primarily the larger communities, that the FEMA money, the FEMA would not work. 
it, they would say that, well, you've got such a dense population that the entity, the county or the city could handle it. And we found out with these disasters that's not true. So he could implement 12B and we'd be able to help those entities recover the costs of the disaster. And again, this is primarily for public architecture institutions. We want to make sure roads, bridges, sewers, public buildings are repaired so that people can use them. Uh, we can go beyond this obviously if we need to, but that's our first and primary choice to get these structures up and running and to make sure we don't bankrupt a local unit of government. And to that financial point, will this help expedite some funds getting to these areas that are hit hard? It could, yes. It, this would say that we would operate as soon as the governor makes the declaration and the House and Senate leadership take a look at what he said. They approve it and we would be good to go. Okay, Representative Pulaski, I imagine we'll be finding out shortly whether or not some of these areas throughout the state will be declared. Disaster. The governor has contacted, uh, the governor's office has contacted me twice. Um, uh, they've asked for advice and I said, whatever you need, let me know. So I'm up here today and I'll be up here for the next couple of days. Okay, and thank you for taking time out of these busy days to come in and talk with us about this. You're welcome. Thank you for raising it because this is an important issue. Agreed.